Hi, I'm going to talk about what is co-integration and how it is used in uh, finance. Well, co-integration is the topic in uh, time series analysis. It is uh, quite a popular topic uh, in, in quantitative finance. Well, time series actually is, is very uh, popular in quantitative finance, uh, especially for forecasting. But co-integration in particular is, is useful in many areas of finance, in uh, pair trading, in uh, risk management, portfolio management, even in forecasting. Um, time uh, co-integration is uh, quite, quite uh, used. So to understand co-integration, let's first understand um, what it means um, and when it is used and why use co-integration when we have other time series techniques available. Well, <clears throat> Uh, co-integration is a technique that is used to understand the long-term relationship between different uh, time series. A few things to note here. First of all, multiple time series. In time series analysis, univariate time series is more popular. For example, the ARIMA, the autoregressive models, moving average models, these are univariate time series models. That means we are only talking about one time series variable. It is, could be stock price, it could be stock return, revenue, etc., etc. But time series analysis can also be done using multiple time series. And co-integration is one such technique where multiple time series can be used. So here the relationship is uh, with multiple time series, whereas in ARIMA, the relationship is with the past values of the same time series. Okay, there are many other differences also, and uh, we will we'll go through that. Uh, but this is one difference between co-integration and other famous uh, you know, time series uh, analysis. And two, the two time series, uh, the two variables, could be more than two, by the way, but uh, bare minimum would be two time series, are said to be co-integrated if they're um, integrated to the same order and there exists a linear combination of them which is stationary. Um, okay, it, it might sound a bit complex but I can break it down for you in simple words. So the, if there are two time series and um, we do not know if there is any relationship between them or not, both the time series are non-stationary in nature and you do not know if there is any relationship at all. Uh, between these uh, two non-stationary time series. Well, one way is uh, to perform a linear regression uh, to check uh, the relationship between these two non-stationary time series. That used to be the case before co-integration. People used to do that. But there was a serious theoretical mistake in doing that because you cannot perform a linear regression with such a data. It could lead to spurious correlation. Spurious correlation means correlation that is only temporary. There is no causal impact. Okay, or there is you know uh, correlation which cannot be explained logically, right? Um, which makes no sense. So therefore, um, this concept was was uh, developed. Co-integration was developed, which simplified the process a bit. That yes, we will do the linear regression. We'll collect the residuals and we'll check whether residuals are uh, stationary or not. If the residuals are stationary, only then, you know, these two time series are related to each other, right? So co-integration is primarily used to find relationship between, you know, time series, not through linear regression directly, but through co-integration, which checks if the uh, linear combination, if you have a linear combination of uh, this time series, whether that comes out to be stationary or not, okay? So that's uh, co-integration. One can take an example. Let's say there are two non-stationary time series, time series one, time series two, um, and you know it could be prices of stocks. You know they move over time. Both are random walks, non-stationary. Um, so both may be trending uh, in some direction, but they may be related in some way, uh, which suggests that there is a long-term equilibrium. That means they converge to a long-term average. That's a very useful information if you actually get to know that. Now, which time series are, which stocks are, you know, co-integrated is something that you need to check because that's not very automatic. 
you need to find out randomly. Well, there are also procedures which can be done. Like you have, let's say, 100 time series uh, uh, models, and you will need to find out, sorry, 100 time series uh, variables or 100 time series, uh, you know, stock prices, stocks, um, and you want to see which one of them are co-integrated. Co uh, you can automate through a loop um, as to which time series, which combination of time series are uh, co-integrated. That definitely is possible. Um, but, you know, if, if given two time series, you can also check whether they're co-integrated or not. As I said previously, linear regression was used. It used to cause uh, spurious correlation, uh, something that cannot be explained properly. Whereas co-integration actually checks the genuine relationship between uh, between time series variables, multiple time series variables. Two minimum, it could be more than that. Uh, I think the the the, the economists actually we came up with this technique. They were awarded a Nobel Prize later on in economics. Um, co-integration can also be used for forecasting, uh, right? So that can be used alternative to Arima, for example. And uh, it is used quite heavily in financial modeling, in quantitative finance, in macroeconomics particularly. It was initially uh, developed for macroeconomics, especially for uh, forecasting uh, of uh, macroeconomic indicators such as GDP, inflation rate, uh, interest rate, uh, unemployment rate, etc. And also finding relationship between these macroeconomic variables. So the technique was developed for policy making purpose, but later on, people from finance actually found use of that in many other areas, such as in quantitative trading, in different sort of financial research. <clears throat> so where it is used? Well, it's used in, in quantitative finance in variety of areas. One is the pair trading, it's a very famous one, where you, you know, find, uh, you know, pair of stocks uh, which are related in some way and that you can find out through co-integration. So it's about identifying two co-integrated assets. It could be stocks, it could be other assets also. So finding out two co-integrated assets and taking a long and short position in them. Right? If they're moving in the opposite direction, but you think that they will converge because they're co-integrated, so long term, sometime in the future they will converge so we expect that the one that is moving in the downward direction will go upward the one that is moving in the upward direction will go downward so they will converge and will have a long term to the long term average in that case you can take long position in one and short position in one. you can take short position in the one that is moving up and long position in the one which is moving down right so if you take different two positions, the traders can make profit out of it when there is a convergence. Okay, so that's a very simple trading strategy. Uh, <clears throat> in risk management, alerts can be used. Like you can find out which assets are co-integrated. So you would like to then diversify across the co-integrated assets, not within the co-integrated assets, because then that will result in concentration and that will result in heavy concentration risk. So uh, improving the risk return profile of your portfolio, it's very important, therefore, to you know see which uh, assets in your portfolio are co-integrated and do not uh, do not uh, have you know too much of uh, concentration there in this co-integrated assets diversified throughout uh, the other co-integrated assets. Can also be used for forecasting. Uh, people have seen that uh, using multiple time series actually improves the accuracy of. Uh, time series forecasting. Of course, ARIMA models where you have univariate ARIMA models where you use only the past values for forecasting the future can uh, be used and, and is also very popular. But using for multiple time series uh, to do forecasting is also valuable in many uh, situations and, and uh, sometimes more accurate also. In microeconomics, where you know this technique was actually uh, initially started and in fact uh, that was the main intention of the authors of the paper. They wanted to understand the relationship between macroeconomic variables such as GDP, inflation, interest rates. They were the one who actually 
um, formulated the, the techniques primarily for macroeconomics. Later on, things um, from people from finance uh, started using this. So by finding a co-integrated uh, relationship, uh, the economist can really understand the underlying you know, relationship between the or the dynamics of the economy or the relationship between different economic indicators for so GDP inflation, interest rate and other things. And then the central bank or the government can take necessary action, mostly the central bank, uh, because this is more of a monetary policy side. So, uh, but on some aspect also the central government or the government uh, can also take some steps. Um, I, I mentioned that it's quite heavily used in paired trading. Uh, one example is that let's say Apple and Microsoft are highly correlated. Well, how do you know? You could also do a core simple correlation. Well, that could be spurious. That means maybe for the short time you have this correlation, but over time there is no correlation. But you can perform a, uh, a granular, sorry, you can perform a co-integration test. There are many tests, actually statistical tests, hypothesis tests. Eagle granger is one. Eagle, Eagle Engel granger, okay is one such hypothesis test you can perform very simple test actually even perform in python r trash matlab strata you know many statistical software they have this test you can perform um, you know regression of one stock price with the other and checking whether residual it's stationary or not if that is the case then the then the two stock prices are the two stocks are co-integrated um, let's say apple is currently trading at a higher price and it's long-term equilibrium and 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 that is also related to microsoft and microsoft is actually trading at a lower price compared to its long-term equilibrium but they are co-integrated okay so what could you do is that you could took a short position on apple and a long position on microsoft and then you could expect that microsoft will go up and apple will fall down in the future because they are co-integrated does that happen all the times not necessarily so uh, but if you try it, let's say, 100 times um, over a period of some, you know, years or months or, or a, over many, many stocks, uh, I think you will be, the chances of you being luckier is more. And that's exactly how people make money through quantitative trading. Um, it is not 100% accurate. You will never be 100% sure. But it's way more uh, efficient than this assessing stocks through common sense. Well, there might be uh, differences, but that's how many people believe so. Um, all right, so how do you perform in Python? In stats model, you have all the packages. Um, in stats model, you have the time series, just import uh, um, the time series, the TSA for stats tool, and there you have COI and T coin. Uh, this uh, function can be used for Ingle Granger test, and that will you know give you the p value. And based on the p value, you can you can assess whether the hypothesis test is accepted or rejected, whether there is presence of uh, co-integration or not. So it's it's about you know assessing whether the residual is is uh, stationary or not. If it is stationary, yes, then there is presence of co-integration. Otherwise, otherwise not. In uh, R, you have URC library. From there, also you can you can perform. In the test result, you will uh, you will get the hypothesis p value, but you also get the estimate where you can actually uh, write down the linear combination of these two. It's not always uh, important, right? If you really not if if you really want to know just whether they are correlated or not, uh, they are co-integrated or not, yes or no, then just the p value is enough. But if you also want to know what is the linear combination? What is the equation um, which uh, proves that there is a linear relationship and that results in co-integration? That also is possible. And here is how you see. Here is y1 and x1 two time series and the equations can be y1 minus 12 of x1 gives you an error. So that's the linear combination. And that error term is actually stationary which is that long run average is zero and some other properties of stationary. All right, so that's about uh, co-integration and how it's used in finance. There are many other uses, by the way, but this is just a brief summary of where it is used mostly. If you have questions, do not forget 
uh, to ask me in the comment section. Thanks, thanks everyone.